The keepers of Reddit. What's the lowdown? Dirty. Inside scoop on zoos. Some people like to bring fruit and stuff to throw into the animals' cages. Even though they are not supposed to. If you're around and someone throws a pineapple into the gorilla or chimpanzee dents. Get the duck out. They will throw that thing full blast at someone. I saw a man get hit full force right in the side of the head, and he was lights out. Pineapple exploded on impact. Paramedics came and everything. Imagine dying from that, and your cause of death being brain destroyed by pineapple thrown by chimp what a terrible way to go. I had to draft the zoo's contingency plan for all sorts of emergencies. Flood. Tornado. Extreme heat. War or attacks. You name it. The plan included a prioritized list of which animals in the collection we would have to sacrifice to feed to the other animals in extreme situations. I literally created a zoo food chain. Humans were left off the list entirely. I volunteer at an aquarium and the people always ask about whether the sharks that are in with the fish ever eat the fish officially we say. We keep them well fed enough that they don't. But on more than one morning on my initial walk around I have found remains of fish that definitely weren't feed fish. On a particularly memorable occasion I found the head of a large porgy just sitting on the bottom. A diver went in and got it before guests arrived. What does volunteer work at an aquarium look like? I'm pretty big into aquariums and live pretty close to my city's zoo which has a pretty poorly maintained aquarium. I've thought about offering to volunteer, but I'm not exactly sure what that entails. When I volunteered at mine, it was over the summer, and I got college credit for it. They had a short 3 week training course before it started, so they could teach us about the animals, and then a few days a week, I'd show up for a shift and I would be scheduled to stand outside different enclosures. Basically just talking to visitors about the animals inside, most were kids. So it was super easy to get them excited about the wildlife. I don't know how other aquariums do their programs, but it was pretty neat. Would recommend it. Rhinos may look super intimidating, and they can hurt you, but really they just act like big dogs. They love being scratched, and will eat all the fruit out of your hand. A zoo type place I visit for work on occasion calls them winners because they roll over and whimper because they want belly rubs with a bristle brush. Late to the party. But I wanted to mention all the older animals. Sometimes people don't realize there are older critters who have health issues. A lot of older fish we had were kept in the back tanks away from view because people assumed normal old fish issues were a result of poor husbandry and would get upset if they were on display. Imagine having your 17 year old incontinent dog in a zoo. People would think it looks emaciated and pathetic. Along the same lines. Zoos have improved significantly in terms of animal husbandry over the years. But a lot of older animals have been in zoos since before these changes occurred. I remember working with a group of chimps and one of the old chimps would masturbate while staring at me as I cleaned the outside of the enclosure. I had to remember this guy joined the zoo at a time when they would dress chimps up in kids clothes and make them have tea parties and shit. He had some mental issues that weren't his fault. Thankfully that troop has gotten better housing and care and has now started acting more normally, even reproducing with their own troop members and acting like real apes should. If you have to choose between cleaning the poop from a flamingo enclosure or an elephant enclosure, choose the elephants. The flamingos were by far the smelliest exhibit. And elephant poop is heavy but comparatively odorless. I work with dolphins. These creatures are sexual as duck. We have two smaller boys together and they've been seen stimulating each other. Our three female dolphins have fresh water hoses that lead into the pool to play with. They flip themselves upside down, lay on the surface, and let the water do its thing. We also have another male dolphin separate from the others that likes to show his dick to families. Pretty funny to watch to be honest. Dolphins are weird. Not as a keeper, but someone who has designed equipment and caging for zoos. I was told many horror stories how some animals would get hurt or even killed because of trying to find ways out of their caging. They can range from really stupid to incredibly brilliant. Had to replace a giraffe and or pen. The previous one had vertical bars. Think old jail cell bars. A bull giraffe stuck his head out then turned and went back into the side to see what's behind him. 
he freaked out and essentially hung himself so we couldn't use vertical bars that they could stick their head through. Witnessed a silverback gorilla having a bad day. He seemed tired of the crowd and put a box on his head to make the world go away. People kept watching. He kept getting annoyed and finally threw the box off. Charged us and pounded on the glass. I'm well aware that glass can take several shots from a .50 calories. Rifle. But the explosive bang from the gorilla hitting the glass was insane and terrified everyone. Ostriches run on instinct primarily. I designed a cage for the vet to treat them. It was entirely enclosed and had multiple small doors all around the cage. The reason is the vet told me about an instance where an ostrich got its foot cut and needed stitches. They got the bird in the cage and one vet fed bird and the other stitched up the cut. No anesthesia. Just a diversion. The bird just kept eating and didn't care about getting the stitches. In a different zoo they needed to replace the caging of a very large bird of prey. I don't remember the species. But I do remember seeing what its claws did to the aluminum tubing cage they kept it in. The aluminum was shredded. And whoever was on the other side was either going to have a bad day or get what they deserved for pissing off this bird. I of course went with stainless steel heavy gauge rod for the cage. The shop hated all the welding, but in the end the cage was way nicer and stronger than the old one. I didn't get to travel much with the installation crew, but I was in the shop supervising the building of caging. There were many times I had to have things rewelded or redone because of safety and queue. C. Issues. Remember when you visit a zoo. That oftentimes your life is depending on someone that wasn't qualified, underpaid, and overworked. Whenever I visit a zoo, I look at the structure design and how it was put together. Too many times I see welds that are of poor quality and barely hold the structure in place, let alone stop something big and heavy that's pissed off. Edit thanks for all the rewards. I don't work in a zoological field anymore, but I'm happy to answer questions. Fun fact about the local zoo I learned when I work maintenance. There is a wolf enclosure. There is info about the wolves. It's maintained. They are just shy in their shelter at the moment. There are no wolves. Never was. Okay. As is tradition. Not a full zookeeper bullet. When I was a teenager in the 90s, I did volunteer work at the Oakland Zoo. There weren't many of us. So we got to choose where we helped out. So I chose to work with Bhakti, the 32-ish year old Bengal tiger. Nearly oldest living in captivity when he finally passed. I chose him because he was beautiful. And he always seemed lonely. He had pacing syndrome hardcore. So his entire paddock was green and lush except for the paths along the outer fence line and one or two diagonals he used to get into and out of his night cage. The keepers did their best with him, but had clearly written him off. He was grumpy, unsocial, hid from the public, swiped and hissed at keepers, and ignored all of the enrichment toys and food put out to keep him mobile. They had a few young Siberians in quarantine already waiting to be put on display. They just had to wait for him to pass, and the stubborn old cat lived to spite them. He always started the morning by pacing his fence line. So I started pacing with him. No eye contact. No sounds. Just walking back and forth for an hour or two. After a couple weeks, he started chuffing at me when I arrived. So I learned how to mimic it to say hi back. Another month. And he would actually break his pacing circuit to walk with me. Jogging his ancient arthritic ass from wherever he was across the green sections to match me. Poor guy just needed a friend. I still get a bit misty eyed thinking about him. Just a lonely old cat who had to spend the last years of his life basically alone. Don't get me wrong though. The keepers really did do their best. But they couldn't spend all day with him like I could. They had many duties and creatures to care for. And he had a really steep barrier to entry as a friend. As grumpy as he was. I still think he was good people. Worked in an animal refuge in Bolivia. We were told on our first day not to let the tape turn its back on you. Forgetting that vital piece of info. Three days later I was filming the tape as it starts to turn its back on me and my friend. Before we could react. It sklang did a 180 and projectile cummed all over my phone and gaping mouth. We couldn't get rid of the smell for days. If you ever come close to a taper. Do not let it turn its back on you. Edit here's the video link. Partner was as a keeper in Dallas. Safety protocols for when a large, 
Dangerous animal escapes its enclosure dictate that you lock yourself in whatever room you can get to quickest and grab the nearest weapon. Which, for most zookeepers, keepers, was a broom or egg for cleaning up animal poop. Lion got out of an enclosure when I was at the zoo on a field trip. The keepers all used shovels. The keepers all used shovels. It was good enough for the trenches of World War 1. Used to work at a zoo a few years ago. An elephant died while I was there, and to transport the body out of its enclosure they had to chop him up. R.I.P. Toto. It's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you Toto to his enclosure. Presumably. We closed the baboon exhibit because a baboon had a stillbirth and the troop was grieving. In reality they were throwing parts of the infant corpse around and there was nothing we could do about it. I worked with wild macaques for a while. And when a baby died the mother would sometimes carry it around for days. Some females would also steal live babies and carry them around like they were their own. Except they couldn't nurse them. So they'd slowly starve to death. A few even stole baby raccoons. And that didn't go well either. I worked with macaques. Too. And one deck loved another one i.e. ripped the skin of his hand completely. Absolutely disgusting. Heard from the head of our primate section that our dominant male macaque was on antisychotics or something akin. Apparently, they didn't like how aggressive he was to the others in front of guests. Macaques are just something else. At least my only worry with the spider monkeys was their repeated attempts to piss on me from a wire tunnel. Lions know fully well that they can't get through the glass. They do that just to get attention. I worked at a zoo in their museum function. Not with the animals. And there was no glass in the big cat's enclosure. There was a giant moat which the Tijera were always playing in, and a 20 odd foot straight vertical concrete wall. You could tell when they were in play mode. They'd pace back and forth along the edge of the moat and suddenly jump in surprise and roll around on their backs. For the casual visitor, they seemed like an oversized house cat. While they absolutely had small cat-like behaviors, I could never for a second forget what that could do. There was one particularly traumatic event with the lions on a very warm and very packed day. The zoo was inside a large park so various animal wandered through the zoo all day. One unfortunate day, a large deer fell into the lion enclosure. The lion stalked it and ran it down within about 30 seconds and tore the deer to shreds. In front of dozens of horrified adults and screaming kids. I felt kind of bad that so many people saw. But, like circle of life. I mean that was probably the best day ever to that lion though. Imagine a warm pizza falling from the sky into your lap. That's the kind of day he's having. Dead zoo animals are sometimes fed to carnivores. There's a farm zoo in the UK that uses crocodiles to get rid of dead cows. The owner once said he'd like the same end when he dies. Have you seen the price of caskets these days? Can't blame the guy. Alligator skin casket. Very fashionable. The poor penguin keepers can never quite get rid of the miasma of dead fish that envelopes them. As for me, the stinkiest job I ever had to do was cleaning out the duck ponds. Managed to empty a whole train carriage that evening. Even though I had changed and my work clothes were double bagged. My wife was a zookeeper and I used to volunteer there a lot. One most of zookeeping is just picking up poop and making delivering food. To the animal that was, was least scary was a cheetah. They were pretty cool ignoring everything, as long as they had food. The most scary to me were the giraffes. Back then you went into the enclosure with them, and they'd sometimes swing their heads around, and try to hit you just to be pricks. You had to be careful. 3 the job would actually be fantastic, if they didn't let people into the zoo. I worked in two completely different departments elephants and neonates. But the drama between keepers was insane in both. Like. Attempted murder level insane. I worked at a zoo in a northern country. Can't say which as it'll give it away which had a white tiger. And was quite famous for it. One day the zoo announced the tiger had died of natural causes. Whilst working there a few years after he died. I was told by a keeper that there was actually a problem with the electric fencing in his enclosure. That the zoo managers refused to pay to get fixed thinking it would be fine. He was electrocuted to death a few weeks after they found the problem. They covered the whole thing up by saying they weren't sure how he died. 
but that he was old. It's still a zoo secret to this day. I really respect my local zoo John Ball Zoo in Grand Rapids, Michigan for being honest about an accident that happened a few years ago. They had a very, very popular stingray and shark petting tank. I loved it and always paid extra to be able to hang out with them and pet them. Unfortunately, one night there was an electrical issue of some kind and I believe they were electrocuted to death. Everyone was devastated and they haven't replaced the stingrays or sharks and never will, even though they were very popular. Zoo staff are honest with guests about what happened even now, years later. I respect them for not lying or covering up the accident and instead using it as a conversation to be able to talk to folks about how important it is to properly care for animals and prevent accidents from happening. Went on a behind the scenes tour of the zoo. Saw quite a few bunnies come out during the tour the neighboring park had a problem with people abandoning pet rabbits. It was pretty clear the dumb bunnies were getting into predator enclosures. Tour guide confirmed they were regularly getting eaten. Tour guide also indicated other urban wildlife raccoons, possums, squirrels, birds were regularly eaten by predators. Said that when they drained the lion enclosure mode for maintenance it was filled with the bones of small mammals. The most amusing stories were about the orangutans who are wicked smart. The keeper trained them to give over items in exchange for food in case they needed to get something from them in the enclosure. But orangutans are smart and realized if they break things up and hand it back in lots of little pieces they get more food. They disassembled a radio that accidentally got left in the enclosure and when there was an opossum in the enclosure the results were a bit more gruesome. If you work with the animals there's a good chance you'll not be able to have any kind of social life. Between the long hours weekends and the stench. I've been kicked out of stores after work because I apparently stunk way worse than I thought I did even after scrubbing off. And I'm around animals every day. But I still can't stand when Otacillian keepers are around me in all hands meetings. The rotten fish ferrety otter smell combo is a gagger. Meanwhile, I work with apes. And they say that I smell like I haven't showed in a decade again, even after I shower. I'm a small animal vet now, but worked in a zoo before vet school. Zoos are one of the biggest purchasers of Calvin Klein's obsession cologne. The cologne has animal musk in it, and it drives the big cats wild. We used to spray it on everything. I spoke to a zookeeper at the National Zoo in DC. We were watching another keeper inside the cheetah enclosure and I asked him about the danger involved. He said a cheetah is harmless to an adult human because it only hunts smaller creatures. I asked which creature was the worst to go in with, expecting hippo, elephant or croc as an answer. Without hesitating he said zebras then leaned close and whispered they are the biggest assholes. They will bite and kick for no reason. I still think it's hilarious that of all the teeth and claws out there. It's strip donkey horses that are the worst. Our lions will urinate on guests if they get too close, which is always funny to see, not so funny to smell.